This is Bob Caudle, and you're listening to In Your Head. All right, we're back, and we're joined by Chris Cruz. Welcome to In Your Head. Hey, it's glad, I'm glad to be here. It's good to be here with you. Thank you. Oh, happy to have you here. Let everybody know you're going to be at the uh, NWA Legends Fan Fest. That's Friday, August 10th through Sunday the 12th, and you can find out information, how to get your tickets, and uh, book your hotels at nwalegends.com. That's in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Hilton University Place Hotel. I was uh, talking to, uh, to Greg Frost. Uh, uh, Greg Frost, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Greg Price. Greg Frost is another guy I was dealing with earlier today in the morning. Oh, okay. But, uh, Greg Price, and uh, just today, and I said, uh, have you not reached your limit on guests? And it seems like he hasn't. So, one, you know, I love coming to these events, but I, I, I often wish that I was just there as a fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's the atmosphere of the fan fest, and uh, I mean, I was at the one in Rockville, and it's just so mm-hmm. much to, to, to do and so many people to see as a fan, kind of as a mark, I guess. You know, you're like, wow, well, this is cool. I'm, I'm talking to these guys that I grew up watching. Right. But uh, if they like Rockville, I know a lot of people did. They are going to love Charlotte. It's, it's almost twice the space. Uh, we had a nice uh, hotel in Rockville, but it's an even nicer event uh, and hotel in Charlotte. So it's going to be tremendous. Mm-hmm. And there's a uh, match this year. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's the thing. I was talking to Greg about, you know, should I call the action? We're going to have some cameras there. Should Apparently they've got a ring announcer or something. So it's like, uh, you know, you get to see people at these fan fests, and then Greg has uh, laid on some great matches. So, I, I mean, I, you know, I know that there's some expense involved in this, but, you know, very cheap airfares nowadays from throughout most of the country into Charlotte. Uh, and, and it's just something that if you're a fan, I mean, a true fan, I don't know where you would want to be that weekend other than in Charlotte. It's just a tremendous event. And I'm not sure, have, have you all mentioned uh, what, uh, what Greg has got lined up for, for uh, Sunday afternoon? No, we were waiting for you uh, to come on to mention um, the big Q&A that's uh, going to be Sunday. So we're going to, mention, we're going to uh, announce it here first time. You want to Great. tell everybody? Well, uh, should I do the honors or do you want to do it? Well, you can do it. Because well, you're going to be the one who's going to uh, you're going to be the master of ceremonies for that, I believe. That's the thing. I get to sit down with these three guys and talk to talk to them and ask them questions. So we're going to have Tully Blanchard, Ole Anderson, and J.J. Dillon. We're going to have a, a horseman uh, semi reunion mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon. We've got things planned from early in the morning Friday until late in the evening Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I've got to be back here in D.C. for a class on Monday morning, so I can't stay, but apparently there are some matches scheduled for Sunday night as well. Oh, cool. Uh, what time of the day is going to be the, uh, the Four Horsemen Q&A? I think he's talking about changing it because both J.J. and I have flights, but just today I think we were looking at even getting some later flights, so things are kind of up in the air for Friday. The key is that we don't want to rush these things. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to change the format a little bit in that what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be spending about maybe half an hour to an hour doing some kind of Charlie Rose one-on-one kind of things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'm going to go out into the audience like Phil Donahue, like I did the last <laughs> time. We're going to ask a ton of questions. Mm-hmm. And the fans are going to be able to ask all kinds of questions. In fact, on, on the forum site on nwalegends.com, uh, there's already a bunch of questions coming in for Ted DiBiase. So I'm looking forward to asking the questions that the fans want to ask, right. uh, you know, some of my own questions, and also uh, uh, listening. I mean, when I was running around, you know, the audience a couple of times when I did it in Rockville a few months ago, I was fascinated by the level of passion and knowledge and understanding that fans have of the individual wrestlers and of the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DB obviously one that's going to be Friday night for everybody who doesn't know. Yeah. Late, late Friday night. So. Yeah. And when you have when you have like three or four people up there at one time, um, you're not just going to get the the questions from the fans, but they're going to interact with each other. Yeah, and that's the thing, and, and it's a challenge because wrestlers. I mean, they're the way that they're built, the way that they're taught is they have to do promos, you know, and they want to get themselves over, which I totally understand. But I think what I want to, because of my journalism background, what I want to try to do is bring to the event, you know, some real specific journalistic questions, the who, what, when, where, why, and how uh, of the, uh, you know, of their lives, not to put them on the spot at all, but mm-hmm. to get them to maybe talk about some things that they haven't ever spoken about. That's oh, a- we've, had, uh, we've had J.J. Dillon on the show a couple of times, we've had Tully Blanchard on the show, both great guys to just sit and listen to talk, so that's going to be great for the fans who are going to be in attendance, including Jack the Morning Spice Yeah, right. well... I'll tell you, and for me, I think I, I, I did it right in Rockville. One of the things that, that you've got to be as, 
confident enough as an interviewer to to let these folks tell their stories. These are born storytellers. They mm-hmm. know what they're talking about, so let them tell the story and and kind of stay out of the way uh, and you know not not uh, try to get yourself over as an interviewer. I just want to let these folks shine like it is an announcer. I want to help these guys get over uh, even more so than they could perhaps get over on their own. I, I want them. To, to, to be the best, I really do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a caller here. He's he's from Portugal. We got a LTNA fan. Hello, fan. You got a question? Uh, I have two questions for Mr. Bruce. Uh, first of all, um, I read an interview you were talking about Mike Ney and how great he was, uh, and that uh, on the show that you did, uh, the AAA uh, show, the When Worlds Collide, you didn't knew a lot of the type of wrestling. Uh, so my question is, uh, because uh, Don West is somewhat cr- criticized uh, about uh, not knowing, not having a lot of Western knowledge, what are your thoughts on Don West? I think that probably the same as a lot of folks. Kind of puzzlement as to how he got the position. You know, uh, there's no doubt that he's passionate. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I don't have uh, a problem with Don West first piece. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I, I don't watch TNA. To me, the, the six-sided ring or whatever is really distracting. I love the performers, but the ring is so distracting. And I think I think TNA is best in kind of a color role, not as a, a play-by-play mm-hmm. guy. Um, mm-hmm. But West, I, I, you know, television is a very cool medium. And you, you, you don't want to, you know, try to lunge at people. And I think what happens is that, you know, people get really, really excited and, and, and really passionate but they get so excited and so passionate that that you feel like they're coming at you through the screen, and it's almost too much. Uh huh. I, I will say Don West is definitely an acquired taste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. actually a fan of his often. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think you know, looking at him, and I mean, you always got to respect the person who's passionate about what they do. Right. Uh, but fan you know, the same, yeah, I mean, but people can be very passionate about what they do and not do it well. So right. I guess I'm not sitting here and saying Don West isn't good, but it's just, you know, you think of all the people who could be doing that mm-hmm. and, and why they chose him, I, I just, I don't get it, but it seems <laughs> to be working out okay. Right. Well, the story is that Jeff Jarrett and Vince Russo and Jeremy Boras used to sit around their hotel rooms past midnight and watch him sell cards. And that's where the idea came up to give him the job, so it's a ballsy choice on their part. Uh, That makes perfect sense to me. Where else would you find your commentator? If he can sell cars, you know, sell wrestling. and I mean, you know, commentating is a sell job, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, it's much more than that. I think it's, you know, having credibility and, you know, having peaks and valleys. And I think mm-hmm. Jim Ross is a great example of that. But, you know, the, 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 the selling of it, my sense of, of Don is that he's at like a 9 or a 9.5 for the entire hour. Right. Mm-hmm. It's very tiring. I find myself really tired uh, watching him. Like, geez, I need to turn this down, but he doesn't stop screaming. Uh, you talk about Jim Ross. Do you think there's anybody in WWE that's going to be able to replace him when he does retire? No, and whatever I hear, you know, talking about Michael Cole or Joey Styles or anybody, you know, coming up, but for some reason, uh, and I shouldn't say for some reason, Jim Ross has done this and wanted to do this for years, and he's worked at this for years. Uh, in addition to his, his desire, he's also got talent, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of people who have desire to do something, but no talent, you know, in, in, in wrestling, in, in, in boxing, in MMA, in, in acting, in, in all kinds of stuff. But Jim has this unique combination of desire and talent or ability. And there's been, there's been no, I mean, people talk about Gordon Soli, they talk about Bill Cardill and others who, who are great in their way. But there's nobody that even come close. Jim Ross is a 10, and the closest I've seen to him is maybe a, a 4 or a 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's absolutely irreplaceable. Do you think that's an underrated role? Because uh, I think a lot of this stuff during like the, uh, the the Monday Night Wars wouldn't have been as, as memorable if you didn't have Ross there calling, like uh, yelling Stone Cold or the Mick Foley when he fell off the cage. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I think that you know they tried it years ago. I remember they had a uh, a football uh, game with no announcers, and I understood the gimmick of it all. But no, I, I think it is a very underrated. It can sometimes be an overrated role sometimes, but it's a very underrated role. And I think that uh, in combination with the wrestlers themselves, Jim mm-hmm. Ross has helped to make many wrestlers. I just don't think you can deny it. Would, would Stone Cold have been as successful? I think so. But Ross was able to take it to yet one more level. And, and you can't put a, put a quality or a quantity on that. So whenever I hear about this discussion about replacing Jim Ross, I want to scream. 
Well, you know, eventually after retire, I just it doesn't seem like there's anybody there that could uh, take his place. I mean, I feel like Jim is what he's in his mid fifties or something. Mm-hmm. Why, mm-hmm. why? Why can't you do this job until your mid sixties or mid seventies? I mean, aren't we at least ten years away from him needing to retire? I I don't get it. I don't get. I, I know at the same time that maybe he just quits or maybe he gets ill and can't do the job anymore. You've got to have somebody. You know, you, you don't ever want to have just one person. You've got to always have a backup. Right. But you know, as I've written in a number of different columns actually over the years. Whatever talent WWE has for identifying uh, uh, a good wrestlers, uh, they don't have that talent when it comes to identifying good announcers. Mm-hmm. They, they just have never been able to grow their own announcers. Uh, and so they're just not able. And Michael Cole has been very strong, very steady, but he is not in Jim Ross's league. Nobody is. That's not an insult. Joey Styles is far out of Jim Ross's league, and I think they found that out when they tried to put Styles in that raw position. It just didn't work. Do you think they uh, they worry too much about what someone looks like? Do you think that's really important for an announcer? Yeah, I think they do. I mean, but at the same time, they put Ross on the air a lot. I mean, I, I you know, because I've known Jim and because I know the Bell's policy, uh, you know, that's not distracting to me. But I've got a friend who, you know, it is distracting for him. And he says, you know, I don't like it when I see Jim on camera because, you know, it's the, the face and the mouth and everything. It doesn't seem like a major issue to me, but maybe it's a major issue to others. But I don't, I don't think the fans are saying, oh, you know, get that guy off the air. He doesn't look, you know, like a, mm-hmm. a rock star or something or a model. No, right. I, I think they love this guy. Yeah, he's definitely one of the most loved guys. Whenever they want to they turn someone heel that that is such a big baby face, they always have him uh, beat up Jim Ross because exactly. basically exactly. no one boos Jim Ross. In, in fact, I hope that sometime... Uh, Jim can come and come to these events. Maybe after he's retired, I don't know. But mm-hmm. you know, we're going to have Bob Cottle at the at the Fan Fest. Uh, yeah. Bob has had some heart attacks, but he is. I mean, he. I think he had three or four heart attacks, but he he wants to come to this thing desperately, and he's going to be there. So it's going to be a great great atmosphere. Definitely. Um, LTNA fan, did you have anything else before I let you go? I just had a, another quick question. Um, I, I was talking about the when when World's Flat Paper View. Um, in that match, there was uh, Chris Benoit, and I have to do this question, which is not a fun question, but it was a question about Thomas. Uh, when did you hear about the tragedy of Benoit family, and what did you felt? About that yeah, I got a call that day, and, and I guess this is uh, why I was concerned about the, uh, you know, people have asked me about this, they, uh, you know, about the, the Chris Benoit tribute. Mm-hmm. It was... I'm not saying it was 100% clear, but it was probably 80 or 90% clear within an hour or two before that uh, that show, that Chris Benoit uh, special aired, that Chris was probably most likely the perpetrator. Mm-hmm. And so um, the whole thing is very puzzling to me. Uh, you know, maybe they did the best they could, but I-, I think maybe they probably just should have had no show at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, um, yeah, on our message board... I was one of the few people, that, I was saying that, you know, right when you heard it, because I think, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they love Chris Benoit and they don't want to think that, but I think any time when, uh, like, the whole family's found dead, that's usually what uh, what had happened. Especially the no uh, ten ring bell salute, they didn't have that, so it kind of <laughs> yeah, gives well, away that they already knew something. Yeah. Well, if they knew, they wouldn't have had a tribute, but uh, thanks for calling in, LTNA fan. Okay. Bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. I, th- I thought he was he was off. Otherwise, I would have let him ask more questions. I was just <laughs> I apologize for that. No, no, that's all right. Like I said, I mean, I, I appreciate being on, and I, and I uh, you know, there there are it's kind of an inside thing, but there are a lot of announcers and wrestlers who don't like the fans. It's really puzzling to me. <laughs> right. Uh, but I'm a fan, and so that's one of the things that I love. You know, I love meeting the fans. I love talking with them, and. I inevitably get questions about how do you become an announcer, and I love you know helping younger people try to achieve their dreams. And you know at these events, you know everywhere you walk, there's a star, and it's just it's just extraordinary. And I'm so glad to be on with you and talk about the atmosphere of the fan fest. Yeah, we were there last year at the Capital Fan Fest, and it it was just um, you said about the the cost, but it's really not that much for for um, just like the, just being there and all the memories you come home with. Uh, like, just uh, we got on the elevator and we turned around and here was uh, Stan Hansen behind us. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. I guess when I mentioned the cost, I think for me I, I spent close to a grand on magazines and memorabilia. Uh-huh. So, so for me that's the cost because I live near Rockville and I just 
you know, like every couple of hours, I'd get a handful of stuff and bring it out to the car in the parking lot. Right, right. So, you know, whatever money I make from being there, I spend. And Cornette, Jim Cornette did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that because he, I think he yeah. pretty much bought out a whole table when we were yeah. there. <laughs> I think he told me he spent basically his entire appearance fee plus. <laughs> on, uh, on that stuff. Cornette has got a, I think he'd create a museum of his own. He's got a tremendous wrestling memorabilia collection. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, I want to let everybody know, someone's trying to call in with a blocked number. We can't take them into the show. The number is 508-644-8503. And please unblock your number before you call in. Uh, do you think that's the reason why Cornette's been so good? Because um, he really loves pro wrestling? Yeah, he's got a... Well, you know, it's interesting because there are a lot of people who love pro wrestling but don't have the mind for it. And, and what Cornette did is he didn't just watch this stuff and love it. He studied it. And I think he also was respectful enough that he listened to the, to the old timers. Uh, and he saw what worked and what didn't work. But, you know, one of, one of Cornette's problems and one of my problems is that when you see what works and, and people aren't, you know, aren't employing what works, you get really frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, Jim has such a love and such a passion for wrestling and for wrestlers that when these things don't happen right, he flips out, and, and understandably so. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that doesn't, uh, I guess it doesn't fit in, like, uh, mainstream wrestling now? Because, he, you know, he's not in WWE anymore. Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I, I think that, you know, at those large organizations, there's some political stuff. And Jim and I are, are both that way. I mean, I don't function well in large organizations, but I've really never held a job. I've always had to own my own company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and that's been one of, the, one of the issues is that, you know, you're outspoken. You're passionate about things. You want things to work, and sometimes they don't. And you don't really care about people's feelings so much as you want things to work. And, and in, a, in a large corporation, there's always you know, backbiting and political infighting, and you just get frustrated and, and you give up on it. Mm -hmm. Now, you're both going to be, uh, I guess, the host of the Heroes uh, Dinner Banquet. It's going to be on the Hall of Heroes Dinner Banquet Friday night. Well, yeah, I'm going to be there, but you know, when <laughs> Jim's around, you don't get really to say a word much. You know? <laughs> right. You try to get a word in edgewise, but that's about it. <laughs> Do you consider it an honor for uh, Cornette to, like, kind of verbally abuse you? Oh, oh, absolutely. I, I mean, <laughs> and it's funny, from the first moment we met, we we met in the late 80s uh, when I was doing the, my first audition, and it was in uh, it was in Columbia, South Carolina, and I was it was the time that Cornette was using his uh, his uh, tennis racket a lot, mm -hmm. and I was turning around talking to somebody, and Cornette came up from behind and whacked me as hard as he could, <laughs> flat on the back, and it didn't hurt so much as it sounded like somebody had shot me. Right. And uh, from the moment we met, Jim has taken great uh, joy in abusing me. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess I do feel honored that I'm the target. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just gotta go over some of the names uh, that's gonna be on the show. You got uh, Teddy Bias, who's just been announced, and uh, Dustin Rhodes. I heard Dustin Rhodes is gonna be. He's gonna have a match with uh, Tully Blanchard, which could be Tully's last match. That's what people are saying. I don't know where that's coming from, but apparently it's gonna be his last match. I, I don't know if it, if he loses it's his last match. I should notice, but. I don't know, and but Tully is in tremendous shape, not just mm -hmm. for his age, but in tremendous shape. Period. Mm -hmm. And that'll be something to uh, to you know be a witness for to Tully Blanchard's last match, especially against uh, one of the roads. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, uh, go ahead. Where you going? No, I was going to say uh, I, I don't have the rundown of the matches, so I'd uh, I'd love to have you you do that as, uh, as well. This, now you're talking about guests and matches both, right? Right, because um, you know the, the guests are right here on the on the on the page, if you go to nwalegends.com, everybody can uh, check out all the, all the legends going to be there. Baby Doll, mm -hmm. who've been on the show. Uh, Christian Ron, Cage. Ron Jarvin. Yeah, Christian Cage. Mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, there's even NWA guys, so it's got the legends and uh, newer guys for s some of the younger fans. Mm -hmm. Kurt Angle. Is Kurt Angle going to be there? I don't think Kurt Angle's going to be there, but uh, Christian Cage, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe from the NWA. Yeah, I'm... I mean, if you think about it, that's what I think the, the genius of Greg Price is, is that you've got an opportunity as an old-time fan to see the old-timers and then to see the new generation. Why Why wouldn't you go? Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, uh, it's going to be twice the space of Rockville, a uh, much nicer hotel. And, and the thing is, you know, and I'm glad you pointed that out, that, you know, you're on the, on the, uh, on the elevator and there's Stan Hansen. <laughs> fans don't just meet... Uh, uh, people in structured environments. You'll be walking around, you'll be at the restaurant, you'll be, you know, in the lobby, and there's a major NWA star. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like I said, uh, and you noted, I'm going to be interviewing Ted DiBiase late on Friday night, 
And then that major announcement that we made exclusively on this show is we've got J.J. J. Dillon, uh, Ole Anderson, and uh, Tully Blanchard. I'll be interviewing them Sunday afternoon. And uh, I know that Greg's got a lot of other surprises, and there's more announcements to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, if you get the um, – because they're, they're probably recording these like they did last year, yeah. and you could, you could buy the Q&As. Yeah. I'm actually on one of those from last year. Oh, did I? Uh, did I, oh, now it's funny because when I, you know, when I was running around, a lot of guys wanted to uh, grab the mic. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and, I, and that was kind of one of my one of the things that the uh, the organizer said: don't let the fans take the mic because they'll never stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it it was always good. Yeah. It was always fun. And and I and I love uh, you know it, it's funny a couple of times I get to the fans and they'd be like they kind of like flip like oh I forgot what I was going to ask. They just <laughs> wanted to talk to their to their, you know, to their their idol. And it was right. great. Well, the reason why I asked you about the cornet thing because um, every everybody pretty much there was from the same area. And when you got to me, you know, I said I was from Cape Cod, and Cornette said, "What the what the f are you doing here?" And that's something I always remember. <laughs> yeah, the, it's funny because these guys they don't get it how much they're liked and loved and respected. They really don't. It's funny. Uh, you know, they, they're like, well, "You would come to travel to see me," and I'm like. Yeah, these guys come to travel to see you from around the country and around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, they think that well, they're not wrestling anymore, but they provided a tremendous amount of great memories. And 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 I'll tell you, I mean, you know, these guys to me, one of the great things is that they really they feel like they've been forgotten. It's kind of emotional because you see these guys, you know, and I'm with them back there, and they, you know, they they come they come backstage after you know they've gotten a the standing ovation, and they're just stunned. You know, they're like can't believe it you know they they feel mm-hmm. forgotten and then all of a sudden hundreds of people are cheering for them again so it's great for everybody mm-hmm. uh someone actually sent me an email they want to know if you still use the name crispy cruiser yeah well terry funk gave me that name and every once in a while it's funny i got a call today from the south Corinthian. and he uses it uses it and uh very few people still know that so those are really like old timer fans he gave me that name when way back in the late 80s when we were doing wcw worldwide and it's funny, I mean, syndication was so important back then, but now it's like nothing. You know, nobody syndicates, it's all about cable. Mm-hmm. You think so, um, once Nitro really took off, that was kind of the, uh, the end of the I syndication? That's good, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I'm just wondering if there, if there is still room for decent wrestling syndicated, because look, there's still tons of syndicated shows, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's always puzzling to me that it's not available still. Do you think maybe the, the price is too high for, like, a small organization to have a syndicated show? Yeah, I think maybe it's the cost of tapes or something, but, you know, you can distribute them now by satellite, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's the, the stations themselves that don't believe that wrestling is followed in syndication because so much of it is topical and up-to-date, and so many wrestling fans can get what they need from, you know, from, from the cable, from, you know, from Spike and from USA, but... Uh, you know, certainly classics would work. I mean, there's a lot of things that would work. I, my feeling is anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the WWE 24/7. You mentioned the uh, the classic wrestling. Yeah. Oh, geez. I, you know, it's funny because I keep saying I'm going to get that, and our cable station here does offer it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I certainly would 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 think that would be tremendous. Uh, I mean, I I would probably watch that 24/7. No pun intended. <laughs> right. There, there is a couple. You know, there's a little problems, like uh, they change some of the music and, and they blur out the old WWE logos. But for the most part, it's really good stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it reminds you of the good old days. In fact, sometimes you know there were some boring matches we used to see in the '80s and everything. And but I'm like, wow, you know, when I look back at some old tapes, I'm like, that was good stuff. That was really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Did Did any uh, any of the wrestlers like ever confront you? Like uh, they didn't like what you said about them dur- during like uh, commentary. That's really interesting. Uh, it's a great question because. Most of the wrestlers, they're so busy, they don't get a chance to watch anything. Right. They really don't. They don't ever watch the TV. But no, it, there was always this thing with wrestlers that if you were an announcer, you were considered kind of a suit and kind of in the office, and they would never confront you directly. Oh, okay. uh, and and the, the other thing, there's kind of a code within uh, wrestling that you, you just don't want to confront anybody, that even if you hate a person, you don't confront them because you may be working with them in a match later that night or the next week. Right, or they could become your boss uh, sometime in the future. Well, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, Eric Bischoff was C-level <laughs> and, and and maybe even D-level announcer, and one of the few guys that was nice to him was Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> right. He one of the champion. few guys. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and DDP is nice to everybody, but Bischoff never forgot that. Now, 
whether DDP should have been the champion, I think that that's up to debate. But at the same time, uh, he was secure because he did, all he did was he was nice to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, who deserved to, to be nice to. But, you know, the wrestlers, they understand that, you know, if you're on top, you know, you're on top and you, you know, respect these folks. But, you know, if you're a D or C level announcer, nobody gives you the time of day. Mm -hmm. uh, but look what uh, look what happened when DDP gave Eric Bischoff the time of day. It was great for him. Uh, what, uh, did you work for Bischoff? Uh, only briefly. In fact, Eric hired me the second time. And actually, I don't want to say fired me because I wasn't really fired. My contract wasn't renewed. There was uh, that announcer, Scott Hudson, mm -hmm. uh, was available in Atlanta. He was he was there. There was virtually no cost of bringing him in. And I think he worked for Bobby Heenan. Always despised him because there were rumors that Scott worked for free. Yeah, uh, you know, and so uh, and and Bobby just absolutely hated that. But mm -hmm. no, I mean Eric. It, it's funny. Terry Taylor had a great line about Eric. When one time I said to, to Terry, he said, "I said, geez, you know, Eric hardly ever communicates with us. We don't know what's going on." He said, "Look, nobody ever talks to Eric unless they need something from him." <laughs> and and I, I I said, "Wow, that is really interesting." They just every time anybody ever approaches you, they need something. That's a terrible way to live a life. <laughs> right. Yeah, then so, you become kind of paranoid, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, you do. And a lot of times, Eric would just kind of, you know, race through the halls and, and not say anything or do anything because all he wanted was to get out of there. He just wanted to get out of there because if ever anybody stopped him, they always were asking him for something. It, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, like death by a thousand cuts. They were constantly picking at the guy. Do you I think that's why he ended up, as time went on, just giving everybody anything they wanted? Yeah, that, I, I think you're right in a sense that it just kind of wears you down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it just it really wears you down. I, I was reading on your your uh, message board spot over at the NWALegends.com. I was just wondering if um, you ever got the the tape of the WCW All Nighter. Um, it's around here somewhere. I know. I mean, I just didn't know what to do. I'm like, I'm not gonna, you know, or, or outshine Bobby Heenan, and I'm not gonna outshine uh, Gene Okerlund. And and I was just at the time it was like a C level announcer. It's, it's just like oh, okay, we'll throw Cruz in here. So what could I do? So I think a couple of times I put a lampshade on my head and <laughs> Vader's mask, and a couple of times I just sat there not saying anything, just like, right. a, like a, a, you know, a bodiless head. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and it's funny. Uh, I don't think anybody remembers what Ian or anybody else said in that all nighter. But so many people talk to me about that. They say, "Remember that all nighter?" And I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, when, when I read those kind of disappointed, I was like, man, I thought I was the only guy who remembered uh, him wearing the lampshade. You know, people's already asked him. <laughs> I, I have that tape around here somewhere, I believe. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good idea. You know, it was a good way to fill some time on PBS. You know, it was pretty cheap. You know, you didn't have to pay for it. It was already done. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, someone here on our message board, they want to know if, you, if your opinion has changed at all about uh, Joey Styles. And he brought him up a little bit uh, earlier. No, I mean, I don't watch the ECW show that much, but I think, you know, Joey Styles was, uh, you know, kind of a, 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 a creation of, 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 of Paul Heyman and uh, was just excellent for the old ECW style. He was literally the voice of, of ECW. You wouldn't want to have anybody but Joey doing the old ECW. But, you know, and he's apparently an extremely nice and respectful uh, and humble person. Um, but he's just miscast. He he wasn't good in the raw role, and he's not so good, frankly, in the in 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 ECW now. It's interesting because he doesn't fit the style, which is to tell a story. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the current style to tell a story and to not call the moves. But he's allowed to call the moves, and that's just not what gets gets you over nowadays. So it doesn't help the the wrestlers. But, you know, the fans don't need that. That's basically you know radio style. On uh, on TV, uh, right. and you know there you, you call a front chancery or whatever, and it's easy to do that. The tough part is what Jim Ross does, which is you know weaving a story and and, and the drama of this thing. Because frankly, once you know the moves and you've got a decent voice, virtually anybody can call pro wrestling. It's not rocket science, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other people are going to be there. Is uh, Bill After is also going to be doing some um, interview segments. The After's Alley. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know. Bill, Bill, uh, Bill is so liked and so respected, uh, and and because he's so nice. Um, and and if you think about it, he has been around. It's again it's been like forty years now. He's been around. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, people still remember the uh, PW Insiders. I think they still call him the After Mags, even though he hasn't been with them in probably ten years. Oh yeah, I call him the After Mags, and that's where we got, you know, that's where we got all of our information. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that that was it. It was it was it was it. If you for the After Mags, that's where I learned all 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 you know my. And, and frankly, you know, I I learned about uh, the other federations. Uh, you know, growing up in Maine. Man, I had no idea what this AWA or even the NWA stuff was. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. You think um, you think they're still important? The uh, like the wrestling magazines. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'd like to see their sales figures. I mean, I, I you know, everybody seems to to uh, to to talk about the internet all the time, and I don't want to understate the effect of the internet or overstate the effect of the internet. But at the same time, I mean, I can't. I just can't imagine. Um, watching, um, uh, uh, you, you know, reading those magazines, which are, you know, obviously, uh, which are obviously very, very uh, you know, outdated and markish. And mm-hmm. I think fans don't go for that stuff. At the same time, remember Bill was doing that. What was it? Wow magazine or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that didn't. That was kind of like a shoot magazine, but it didn't go over. And then, of course, WWE has got Raw. Their, I guess, what was their WWE magazine, which is kind of a combination of work and shoot. So no, I mean for some reason those magazines just didn't do well, and I guess maybe that's that's one of the reasons that Bill left is the fans just started to get smarter and smarter. Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you think uh, the internet is uh, is good or bad for wrestling? Uh, I mean I'm on the internet like 18 hours a day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Much of my business is on the net, but you know there's there's some bad things about it. But I would I would say that you know the one thing I would say is that the internet is probably given too much power uh, by by wrestling organizations that there are a mi- there are millions of wrestling fans who don't follow wrestling on the internet and mm-hmm. and the, I don't think you should look for the internet and I don't think you should be freaked out if the internet knows stuff about your organization that you don't want fans to know I think that there's that people are much more uh, concerned about the internet than they than they should be yeah it doesn't you're hear gonna that. do you know and don't worry if it, if it leaks it leaks but still, it's you know your the live fans, the fans who are there live, the fans who are watching on television. Book for them. Don't book for the, for, you know what what the what people call the smart marks. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the smart marks can really help you. I mean, you know, people like me read this stuff. I think we know what we're talking about, and you might want to listen. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. Right. Well, I know. Just I, every time I go to a live show, there's always someone next to me who says, "Wow, that guy is big." And you know, <laughs> if you just listen to the internet, no, no one's uh, no one really cares about that on the internet but that there is a large group of fans that do yeah and and they you know i remember years ago i would see the torch uh uh which i like um, you know wade keller was trying to get fans to uh to read it and so he would work out deals where they'd give it out to all the fans and i saw some of the fans and some of them were like i don't really want to know this you know, right. others were they were delirious with joy that they could get inside information but others were like i'm not that into it i just want to you know, I just want to enjoy mm-hmm. uh, this great art form that I'm seeing in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the guys you got uh, Nikita Koloff, uh, Ivan Koloff, uh, the total yeah, package Ivan. Lex Luger. You want? Yeah, yeah. Lex is going to be interesting because he's been very open about his tough times. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's really going to be interesting. Yeah, and he's definitely. I don't. I don't think he's been in any kind of a convention like this before. No, I was surprised when I saw. Uh, that, but no, I, I I agree with you. Lex Lex is, uh, I, I think he's got a lot of guts showing up. I, I you know he was not uh, fun to deal with, and it's going to be really interesting to, um, you know, really interesting to see you know how he uh, you know how he does the convention. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mass superstar Bellini, Demolition Axe, and his partner Demolition Smash, uh, Barry Darso, we had them last week. Of course, the uh, Ultimate Express guy is going to be there. Uh, do you have any stories from like a previous uh, fan fest that you'd like to? Well, yeah, here's with? the thing. Because I, you know, you talked about Barry Darso and Bill Sleedy. Um I I um, did the interview with Bill Eady, mm-hmm. and one of the questions toward the end was, you know, he was talking about the, the fans were talking about, you know, will you guys get back together? And I said to to Bill Eady, I said, what if Barry Darso out of the blue calls you at your home, and Eady says to me, I probably wouldn't be there. And I'm like, okay, all right. And then I hear that they're talking. So, mm-hmm. you know, wonders never cease. So I'm mm-hmm. real happy. 
Uh, I like both of the guys. It, one of the puzzlements to me was uh, I had not known both of them well, but well enough to know that they were stand-up guys. Barry was a great guy, and so was Bill. And so, you know, sometimes when you have warring parties, you have one unreasonable party and then another party that's pretty reasonable, and you know who the reason for it. But it was just two very reasonable but very, very highly uh, opinionated guys and, and, and proud guys, and something happened and didn't work out, but apparently they're back together. And I'm pleased mm-hmm. just bunch. I had no idea. Because, you know, for me, as a fan, one of the great highlights was that, what was it, Survivor Series, when they when they came out one and two, Axe and Smash. Remember right. that? Yep. And, yep. and I remember watching that up in Maine, and I was like, okay, what's going to happen here? You know, are they just going to, you know, dog it? They beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, they wailed away. <laughs> it was something. It was something. Uh, when you said about, you know, a lot of the wrestlers are fans themselves, when we were at the, um, the Capital Legends Fan Fest last year, um, Paul Bear, he, he was he was in the back just uh, listening to one of the one of the, uh, the Q&As, just, you know, just as a fan. Yeah. I, I think he got up and funny. said something. But. Yeah, he, 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 he uh, I, I put the microphone, to, and then I, you know, I did the classic double or triple take. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. So yeah. that's the thing, so many of these, uh, so many of these wrestlers, even though it's not cool to say that they really, they're fans. Mm-hmm. They're wrestling fans, which is one of the reasons they got into the business. So. Yeah, it was pretty much the same way, because we were sitting in the back, and I looked over, and I was like, uh, I think that's uh, I think that's Paul Bear over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and and, when, and, and uh, I guess, I don't know if uh, Greg knew that he was coming, or, or didn't know, or what, but you know, he should, he should have been up there too. I, I I bet he has some great stories. But no, it was great to see him, and he was funny and everything. Oh yeah, that was that was one of our first guests here on the show. Big fan of Paul Bear. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything else you want you want to tell the fans before we let you go? Well, I just I, you know I, one of the things that uh, some fans sometimes they're reluctant to come up to you or whatever. And I'm no star. I love to sign. I love to take pictures. I, you know, I love to to. Uh, to talk, uh, I mean, I'm not really good on exposing the business, but I certainly love to, uh, you know, to talk uh, about uh, about the business. And you know, let's just talk as fans. I think that's the thing. But really, it's a tr- it's going to be tremendous. I mean, whatever interviewing that I do, it's, it, ultimately it's going to be backed up by the fans who are going to be asking a lot of questions. And we, like I said, we announced at DBRC, and then here on the show exclusively, we announced JJ Dillon, uh, uh, Tully Blanchard, and Ole Anderson were going to be Sunday afternoon, but. We've got a whole lot more surprises in store, and I mean, it's worth. Uh, it's really one of those priceless moments, and I hope that people show up and have a great, great weekend. I used to live down in North Carolina. Charlotte's a very friendly city. You can get some you know, nice sweet tea, some some barbecue, and uh, people are just going to love it. I, I didn't hear anybody in Rockville with any complaints, other than maybe they wanted more time with the rest of us. Right. Yeah, just um, like you said before, but about uh, you spend a bunch of money, like a thousand dollars or whatever, just uh, buying stuff. But just so everybody knows, you don't have to do that. You can just go there and you can just uh, get the autographs from, from the people. You can you can spend as much time as, as you want there, and it's not just one day thing. It's a whole weekend. Yeah, yeah, it mm-hmm. really is. And and you know, you go, you don't have to spend another dime, and you're in. I mean, you're just in, and you're seeing these people. And you know, I mean, some of the wrestlers are charging for autographs, but most of them are not. Mm-hmm. You know, and they'll take a picture with you and. I mean, think about it. You know, like you talk about Stan Hansen. I mean, Stan Hansen used to scare the crap out of me. Yeah. You know? And then all of a sudden, you're there in an elevator with him. And, hey, Stan, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. really kind of weird because I don't know. I mean, other sports, you know, most of the, uh, I mean, they have like these autograph sessions and Pete Rose and all these guys. But you spend, you know, 50 bucks for an autograph. I don't know any other sport, and, and I do consider a sport, but where you can literally see the people that you rooted for and against and talk to them. I mean, I saw fans having drinks with wrestlers, having mm-hmm. deals with wrestlers, having conversations. These are guys who are fascinated. I have to tell you this before I forget. Um, they will come up to me. We'll be sitting in the green room backstage, and they'll be like, this fan asked me about a match I had 20 years ago. You know, I, I mean, Bruno San Martino was telling me the other day, that there was a match apparently where he came in late and he literally was carrying his suitcase in the arena. He was still dressed in a suit. He doesn't remember it, but a fan remembers it like it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. And 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 these wrestlers are so, even though they'll play it cool, they get really emotional and really touched when people care enough, number one, to come to an event like this, 
and care enough to tell them about the great memories that they had. Because, I mean, I don't know, I'm 48. I've been following wrestling almost 40 years now. And some of the great, uh, for me, the great moments of my life have, uh, you know, been uh, wrestling-related. Mm-hmm. And so the opportunity for me to be involved in wrestling and then for me to talk to, 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 to those wrestlers about it and to really respect these guys who sacrifice their bodies for my enjoyment, uh, it's just a great honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the guys, we were there and we uh, interviewed some of the people uh, you know, at the show, mm-hmm. and a lot of them said a lot of the fans remembered stuff that they didn't rem- remember themselves. Yeah, because they're traveling. They're doing five and six matches a, a week. And, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I kidded with Bruno because, uh, you know, when that fan came up, and this was at an event like a year ago, and said, hey, you know, one of the greatest moments of my life was when I, you know, when they announced that you had missed your flight. But then, you know, you came in with your suitcase in your hand, and uh, you beat up whoever it was with your suit on. And Bruno says, well, thank you for remembering that. And then he said, but I have no memory whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so afterwards, I said to Bruno, I said, Bruno, geez, that's great. You know, the greatest memory of this guy's life, and you tell him you have no memory of it. <laughs> and he laughed. But it clearly happened. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Because that was one of, you know, what, a thousand matches that Bruno wrestled that year. or you know, that is So it just goes on and on and on. But it's, it's just a great time. There's no egos. There's no fighting. There's lots of reasonably priced, you know, merchandise. There's free autographs, mm-hmm. pictures all over the place. And, uh, and I mean, I, I don't know why I'm telling you, you were in Rockville and you got the good vibes yourself. Yeah, yep. And, like, I think it's like $150 if you pay for the, for the whole weekend. And, and oh. that includes, you know, all everyone's autograph and a picture with them. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, the peop- the extra people at the booth, you know, you might have to pay uh, individually for those guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's some, of the, some of the vendors bring in the guys. But, hey, mm-hmm. look, you know what? If you just want to say hello to them, you know, and I notice that some of those guys, they're, they're pretty cool. Like, you know, even though they're supposed to charge for their autographs or pictures, you know, you get them in the hallway, they'll do it. They like being noticed, like everybody else does. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's not—it's not like it's big money. Either. Most of them's like five or ten dollars. Yeah, that's true, right. <laughs> that's absolutely right. So. And we saw somebody having breakfast with uh, Abdul the Butcher. How, how, <laughs> you can't get any cooler than that. Really? Geez, I'm not sure I could. You know, you look at his uh, forehead and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> they were really excited because we talked to them outside in like. Uh, is uh, our other guy was uh, mm-hmm. taking a smoke uh, a cigarette break, and they were showing us all the pictures they took at a uh, at breakfast with them. Forbes okay. and Abdul are not a good mixture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I think they even have pictures of him with the fork up to their head. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because Mike Tanay and I uh, years ago we went to uh, Abdullah's restaurant. Ah, uh, Abby's house know. ribs. Yeah, and he was there. I got a got a hat and everything. He was there. He sat down with us, and Mike had a great line. It, it was probably in, you know not as funny now because everybody said it. But he said, "Do you think they have any forks left?" In- <laughs> <laughs> I think I've actually heard that they don't use like uh, utensils. They're supposed to use your your fingers. Oh, uh, your. <laughs> I think I actually saw that on Greg Price's um, on the on the uh, on the website one time. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a good time, and uh, and uh, Abby's always a, a pleasure to deal with, so that's good. Yeah. Have you been there to the House of Ribs? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Mike and I went there. Mike oh, okay. And I, and I went yeah. there when we were at WCW, and, and we didn't know that Abby was going to be there, but he was there, <laughs> and we sat down, and the food was excellent, great service, and uh, just enjoyed it. Is it still there? It's still there, isn't it? Yeah, still I think open? so. Yeah. We ask yeah. a lot. Anytime he, his name comes up, we always ask about Abby's House of Ribs here. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've never oh, been. We'll have to go there one of these days. Well, we uh, really appreciate you coming on tonight. Oh, yeah, geez, that, that was quick. Yeah, I thank you for for that. I, yeah, we said nice. a half hour. It's been almost been an hour, I think. Oh, well, I'm glad to do it. Please uh, have me on any time. I, I love to talk to the fans. And I guess, are you guys going to be in Charlotte? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Inter and I will be. Yeah, we'll uh, be Barbie's there. in England, so. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> then I uh, look forward to seeing you all, and we'll have a great time. And uh, let's uh, let's uh, certainly uh, do this again. All right, yeah, I'd love to have you back sometime. Everybody check out nwalegends.com. Yes, sir. Hey, human rights, you're out there running the circle and put down that can of warm stuff in that big fat old lady you're working at that young for you to eat dinner. This is Bobby the Green Hen. I'm in your head, and I'm online at dot com. So get with it, or I'll move in next door to you. You won't like it, because you like your wife, I guess you would like it. <laughs>